So I thought, well, why not invite you on the show and you can tell us, you know, what it is that is important to understand about heart disease and I'll throw some challenges and questions at you perhaps and um, then we'll all get the benefit of that. Well, that sounds a fantastic part. And let me tell you that um, I recently did interview with a couple of the carnivore doctors, um, including uh, Dr. Saladino, who I know mm. that you get along with and agree on everything with. Absolutely. But also uh, Dr. Ken Berry. Yep. And some people made comments there that, oh, you should get Bart K on because he really knows the science well. And I started looking at your material and I really appreciate how you point out that, you know, observational data like epidemiology is worthless when it comes to cause and effect relationships. And really it's for hypothesis generation and not much more. And that, you know, you're very rigorous, especially about the science with respect to metabolism and related health issues. And, you know, I try to observe the same principles, understanding the scientific method, and, you know, knowing that most of the published research out there, even experiments that are at least stated to be done according to the scientific method, right, have results that can't be replicated, that are false. We see even people like Professor Ioannidis commenting on that. Even the drug industry is complaining that the basic science research is so flawed that they can't even use it to make money anymore, right? So the work that we're doing here, adding skepticism to these issues, is really important. And if you look at all of the literature, and you you know, you can start with a textbook, you can go to the American Heart Association or other shill agencies like that, you can go to review articles, primary literature sources. And for almost all the modern diseases that are prevalent in the community and the leading causes of death, they really have almost no information about what's the actual cause of these illnesses. And mm. you know that the the pharmaceutical treatments and other related allopathic treatments never really address the, the root cause or underlying cause because they don't even know what it is. And it seems to be similar with cardiovascular disease. And, you know, maybe we can kind of specifically talk about uh, heart attacks mm. because, uh, you know, we maybe want to exclude the heart disease that's popped up in young people the last couple of years that may have a controversial cause. But certainly, you know, we've seen the the first heart attack ever in the United States was, wasn't was reported until 1912. And before that, even all throughout the medical literature in Europe and such, there were very few case reports of heart attacks. It was practically an unknown disease. So there's something about our modern life that has brought on the heart attacks. And if you look in the textbooks and the papers, all you see are risk factors right? Or things like inflammation, but not, well, what's the cause? Why is there inflammation? Or, you know, diabetes. Okay, well, then why do they have diabetes? Of course, diabetes can't really be the cause because many people without diabetes have heart attack. Mm -hmm. And even atherosclerosis, I think there's some big questions because of a couple things. One, you know, the finding that plaque rupture is the precipitating event for infarctions. And that tends to happen in small lesions rather than large plaques. Large plaques are what is said to cause angina. But then we also have animals, like you're probably aware of this, but I was looking in the animal kingdom, you know, is there spontaneous atherosclerotic disease? And interestingly, what I found is only in herbivorous animals mm -hmm. do they find this, but there are no heart attacks in animals. So why, if they have arteriosclerosis, why don't they have heart attacks? Is Are these two things really related or are they distinct and there's something unique about humans or maybe the animals just don't live long enough to get heart attacks? You know, and I don't know the answer to those questions, but it definitely gives us some preliminary deductive information about what might be causing it in humans. Right. Yeah. So we've got the instability of plaques and you've got the rupture of that unstable, usually smaller atherosclerotic lesion, absolutely. And then you've got a thrombus which circulates for X period of time before lodging somewhere and causing an infarct, which if that's in the myocardium, okay, now you've got an MI. If it's in the brain, you've got a stroke, those kind of things. You know, you can get embolisms right. in the pulmonary circuit as well. Sure. That can occur. And you can have it in the extremities too, get in a Absolutely. Tunnel. Yep, absolutely. At the end of the day, the primary stuff for me, the stuff that I'm always throwing challenges out to folks are obviously around these folks that will stand up and bang the lipidology Bible, that bit of canon, and say, the cause of atherosclerosis is LDLC, blah de blah de blah, which they'll point to epidemiological so-called prospective cohort studies, 
and or Mendelian randomization, neither of which is capable of informing on cause nor effect, even though they will claim that Mendelian can, which absolutely it cannot. And it also seems to me that they are all, they are all completely ignoring the clear presentation histologically of atherosclerotic lesioning. It's patterning, it's placement, how it develops, where it develops, and what the makeup of those plaques are in terms of the histology of that tissue. And to me, those are the very, very important points that would seem to absolutely dismiss any notion that any of the lipoproteins play any causal role whatsoever. What do you think of that? Yeah, well, I completely agree. And I've known about this uh, for quite a long time. And so, you know, I saw the the graph that you commonly put up, right? I think it's a 164 countries. It comes from the British mm. um, Heart Association or something like that. And there's a very similar uh, data for LDLC, also from the NHANES uh, survey in the United mm. States, which has, you know, not as many uh, respondents, but quite a number, but it shows the same exact pattern. In fact, when you get below 99, they, they divided into groups categorically, but the 70 to 99 group was the only, you know, that and the below 70 are the only two groups that had elevated all-cause mortality. Hmm. The higher LDL levels, which is what we're told is, you know, going to kill you, they 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 had the same exact mortality, basically one, hmm. um, as, you know, the, the median value. And it's that J-shaped curve or inverted J exactly, you know, like you showed. Now, this hmm. is epidemiologic data, but still, obviously we can use it to rule out certain things, right? If we see that the associative relationship is the opposite of what we would expect for a causal relationship, we can negate that as a cause. Although if it was correlated positively, it could still be a cofactor and we couldn't uh, confirm it as a cause. So so I think, you know, I completely agree with you. And also just common sense wise, obviously cholesterol is required for every cell in our body, right? And it's the substrate for many uh, bio molecules that, that are vital to survival. So how could it also be the cause of our demise at the same time? It seems like that is outside of nature's wisdom. Exactly. The analogy, the, the the analogy that I'm always throwing around is the one about well, every single time you turn on the television and there's a major forest fire somewhere, you will see fire crews running around doing fire crew stuff. <laughs> every single time, won't you? Ergo, that's we, the we same need to analogy that's uh, frequently used about bacteria in uh, germ theory as well. Sure. Yeah, but you're right. It shows obviously the firefighters don't go around starting the fires. <laughs> so you know what what we've got is a situation where the the LDL, which delivers the cholesterol to the damaged tissue, and the cholesterol thus delivered to said damaged tissue, that's happening for a reason. Fifty percent by weight and by volume, as it turns out, of every membrane of every of the several trillion cells in your body is cholesterol. So if those cells are damaged in some way, then of course the body is going to want to deliver cholesterol there to repair that damage. And if Plus, you've got damaged tissue, then you've got the proteoglycans that would, you know, attract that occurring. Absolutely. Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say there also may be some of the cholesterol that made up the cells that are damaged may collect and be, you know, taken up by the macrophages, the so-called mm. foam cells yep. as well. And then, of course, you need oxidation. Uh, the native lipoprotein is not going to cause a reaction in the immune system because it's your own native lipoprotein. So uh, at the end of the day, what we get from these imbeciles, let's be honest, that support this lipid theology, they'll say, oh, yes, well, turns out that LDL is necessary for heart disease, but not sufficient. Well, hang on a minute. You just said cause and effect previously, didn't you? You said this causes heart disease. If it's not sufficient to cause heart disease, then it's not the cause of heart disease. That would make pretty basic logic sense to me. But then I'm a divergent thinker, perhaps. And perhaps so are you to some degree. Andy, I don't know. You, you tell us. A am I off? Well, you know, look, this is, um, it violates a basic uh, principle of science, which is falsifiability. Mm -hmm. So if you have a hypothesis and you test it and the results don't support it, then, you know, you need to throw out that hypothesis yeah. or modify it substantially and then come up with another experiment to test it. But what happens is, is that scientists in the modern era 
scientists seem to have such fervent beliefs in their hypothesis that no matter what the data shows, they're going to stick with that hypothesis, but they'll they'll make slight modifications to explain the anomalous data mm. and then stick with it. And, mm. and they, they seem to do this quite persistently. And, you know, I can think of several examples, some of which might be too controversial for YouTube, but I, I definitely see this pattern. And I think that's what's going on here. So, you know, first it's cholesterol, then it's, well, yes, cholesterol, but paired with some other X factor, right? And then when that X factor doesn't pan out, then they'll have yet another way to still blame cholesterol. Um, Reverse causality, it's, though. It's what? Reverse causality, though. <laughs> when, when, when you find that a large population of people who have had an MI in the last 24 hours and they have their cholesterol tested, there's a study that was N equals 134,000 or so in various different hospitals. I think it's all stateside. And obviously the first thing they'll do when you have, when you present with an MI is they'll take your cholesterol reading. So we've, we've got this data. Okay, what are the cholesterol levels of people who have had an MI in the last 24 hours? And do we yeah, have I this? I think it's only a... A small portion who right. have any what elevated you would, what, cholesterol. What would you right? expect? Okay, if you have, if you had one hundred and thirty four thousand people who have had a heart attack, definitely, wouldn't you find that most of the people who have had a heart attack would would be in a bin of people with a high level of LDL because that's the cause we're told, and there'd be fewer and fewer and fewer of those people at lower and lower levels. It would be a straight line. If I were if I were to answer that question based on what I was taught in my medical training, I, I would say 99.9% .9 would have mm. sky-high mm. uh, lipoprotein and, and possibly total mm. cholesterol level. Guess what I they found? Know that's not, I know that's not what the data showed. So well, The data showed a normal result. distribution curve, a bell-shaped curve. So that eliminates dose response, cause and effect, LDLC, and heart attacks right there. But then they turn around and say, oh, no, 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 it's reverse causality. The heart attack caused them to have lowered levels or some <laughs> other. Oh, okay. So we're looking at this inverted J-shaped or upside down N-shaped curve where you've got a nadir of the lowest incidence of heart disease at X cholesterol level. And then you've got more above that level and more below that level. So this is the ideal apparently, and you've got a bell-shaped curve of, of all of that, and they say, oh, well, no, no, it's, 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 if cholesterol's high, then this is, this is valid then, and it's the cause of the increase above the nadir, but if it's below that, and the heart disease, still, oh, then it's reverse causality. Good. Yeah, that's just what I was saying, right? Invent a way to explain the anomalous findings, but stick to the primary hypothesis. Exactly, and, and other, the thing that they're actually supporting is that, well, statins are one of the top 10 grossing drugs, aren't they? Yep. Billions of dollars a year, I'm told. But it's still, that even though that drug is now well off patent, there are still billions and billions of dollars a year being spent on statin medications, which, by the way, are associated with an exact increase in measured lifespans in statin populations versus their so-called match controls of not one single day. So even if these things were safe, safe and effective, effective and safe, the indication for that drug is none. Well, we know they're not, they're neither safe nor effective. So the fact that statins are still prescribed to me is criminal. I'm astonished that we even have any all-cause mortality data because usually those kind of studies are simply not done because they don't want to reveal the weakness of using these pharmaceuticals in the long term. Mm, exactly. And then you look at a statement by the, uh, the European Consensus Panel on Atherosclerosis, wherein they state absolutely that the cause of atherosclerosis is absolutely LDLC, no question. And then you look at the conflict of interest statement in that paper, which I have put up on <laughs> various videos on my channel multiple times because it's so wildly amusing.